Welcome back to P2 Arrow, where I'm building the new Rans S21. My power plant of choice is the Yamaha Sidewinder 3-cylinder turbo. And the panel, well, it'll be decked out with the full gamut of Skyview HDX tech. I've documented the build thus far, starting with the very first rivet, so make sure you go check out the other videos and get caught up to where I am today. I thought I'd start something new, as we get deeper into avionics and subsystem design. I realize many out there don't have the luxury of being immersed in aviation for most of their lives like some of us do. When we start talking about things like Atahars and CAN bus and magnetometers, things just start to get clear as mud. Rather than leave those folks out in the wind, I thought I'd start a deep dive series into these components and really look at what they do and what considerations are involved in mounting this equipment. So today I'm starting with the Atahars and remote mag units, as these are, in my opinion, the most important boxes in a Skyview system. We love our acronyms in aviation, and everything gets labeled as such. So Atahars stands for Air, Data, and Heading Reference System. This unit drives the artificial horizon, synthetic vision, airspeed, altitude, vertical speed, slip, turn rate, angle of attack, and gyro stabilized heading inside your Skyview display of choice. Additionally, the OAT or outside air temp is read using the SV OAT 340 sensor that plugs right into the Adhars unit. Dynon offers both a 200 and a 201 version of these units, with the 200 being the primary and the 201 being a backup for those desiring additional redundancy. At a minimum, the primary unit is required in any Skyview installation. With so many functions packed into one little box, there's several considerations to be made while planning. First off, it should be secured in a rigid structure free of vibration within 12 feet longitudinally and 6 feet laterally from the aircraft's center of gravity. Secondly, it should be in an area as magnetically benign as possible. While it is possible to compensate for small static magnetic interference during the calibration of the unit, dynamic magnetic fields like AC currents or non-constant DC currents and non-stationary ferrous metals should be avoided. Even non-magnetic hardware like brass screws, washers, and nuts should be used for mounting. Dynon cautions users that, while testing, if something is magnetic, don't touch the magnet to the surface as this could cause it to become magnetized. Also, taking a handheld compass and moving it around the area with all the aircraft system running like nav and strobe lights and radios powered up all while watching the needle for erratic movement or deviations off true north would indicate that this is not a suitable area for install. Orientation of this box is critical, as the pitot ports should face forward, with the tabs towards the bottom of the aircraft and the sticker label up. It needs to be within one degree of all three axes of the aircraft as well. Other considerations are to avoid areas that are subject to rapid temp changes or high humidity and make sure it's not the lowest point in the pitot static system. This will reduce the chance of moisture ingress through the lines. Lastly, future accessibility is always something to think about. Make sure that you can get to the unit for service and have room to remove the electrical and pitot connections after the aircraft is complete. To make things a bit easier and a little more widely achievable, Dynon does offer the SV Mag 236. This is a remote magnetometer developed for situations where the Atahars doesn't end up in a spot free of magnetic disturbances such as a steel frame or small compact aircraft. If using the remote magnetometer, the magnetic restrictions on the Atahars unit are removed allowing for much more flexibility. I personally am using this setup allowing me to place my Atahars up behind the instrument panel with the mag out in the tail clear of other equipment and other disturbances. The remote mag has similar mounting considerations, so I encourage you to familiarize yourself with the installation manual during this process. Both units could not be easier to wire up. Looking at the wiring diagrams, they both are powered with the Skyview network, meaning an individual power circuit is not required. Any of these pre-made Skyview cables will work, and for those wanting a more custom install, longer kits are available, and these can be cut down to your desired length and re-terminated with a simple connector pack following the Skyview pinout diagrams. As to where to plug these units into the system, well, that's part of the beauty of data bus setup. It doesn't really matter. As long as it gets plugged in someplace and eventually gets tied into the screens, the system will recognize these components. For me, I have a network hub 
under the passenger seat. My autopilot servos, the ADSB receiver, and the remote mag all plug in there and then one network cable will go forward up behind the instrument panel tying these into the system. I always look forward to the dialogue created by the comments so let me know if you found this useful or not. I'm going to end this one here but if there's something you'd like me to deep dive in the future make sure you let me know. Thanks for watching.